Okay, so the main test we have to do here is you can't maybe can't read that because the picture quality, but there is a plus five volt test point uh, below the one hundred uh, microfarad capacitor. Uh, so put your um, if you put your uh, black probe on the heat sink, which is grounded, uh, and your red probe in the five volt the five volt test point after you plug it in. I'm using the uh, 9 volt power supply. You should read 5 volts plus minus 2 percent. I'm reading uh, 5.2 volts, which is a bit high, but I know that's the output of the 5 volt regulator. So that's good. Our next step, our next step is to make a short. So we're actually going to short JP1, which is right above the 5 volt mark, the 5 volt test point. So let's short that. So I made a mistake. It's actually JP1. Uh, I was pointing at JP4 before, but if you notice, uh, JP1, I shorted once I did the 5 volt test. So I shorted those two leads together. So now we're ready to solder. And uh, at that point, if you uh, if you measure the 5 volt mark and it, it drops below uh, a 10 percent of 5 volts, then you're you might be in trouble. Check your soldering on all the other points. But regardless, if you've been watching the video and going along with the Assembly notes you should be okay. Our next step is to solder the LCD on. So fit it into place and start soldering. So just using a little bit of flux just because it makes the process go a little bit smoother. All the soldering's done. Wasn't so bad, was it? All the main soldering, soldering to the board. The next step is to take our included power supply and again plug it in. And the bootloader should show up. So there we go. Our oscilloscope is working. So now we've got two more steps to do. Two more main steps to do. First, let's put on the chat put on the button covers and then put on the chassis. The button covers are just little white things that go onto the uh, onto the tops of the buttons. I'll throw them on and then I'll uh, put the chassis on. I'll show you a bit by bit, it'll only take a second. Button covers are on, they just fit on top of the buttons. And now let's put the chassis on. Chassis is easy, self-explanatory. Okay, step one, place the screws through the bottom, a screw through the bottom. Place the, main, the big standoff on top. Next, take your, your main uh, unit, sit it on top. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take the small standoffs, you're going to put them in each of the four corners straight down, and then we'll do the final step in just a second. So now that that's done, we're going to do our last main step with the chassis, and then we'll be done with that and we'll do the probe. It's resting on top, goes nicely through with the buttons, and we're going to put in our screws through the top into, our, into the smaller standoffs. There you go. You just saved yourself over 20 bucks doing it yourself and it only took you an hour. Obviously in my video, it took about 10 minutes, less maybe, but uh, it takes about an hour. And read the assembly notes before you do it and watch the video. You can do it in correspondence with the video. So uh, thanks for watching. Well, I'm not done quite yet, but that's the main unit right there. Now let's concentrate on making the probe. So here's your final product. I don't really need to walk through this, but I will. This is what you want for, this is obviously your ground, grounding probe, your negative probe, and your signal probe, your positive probe. And here's what you have to work with. Two alligator clips, an input jack, some heat shrink, two free wires, and uh, a main cable wire. So let's go through it step by step. First of all, what you have to know is your outer shield here is your ground, and you can find. If you don't believe me, what you can do is you can go and take your continuity tester, and you can touch the outskirts here to the heat sink, which is grounded. So then, so what we need to do is determine which which lead on the inside of the connector is the ground. So it's the bigger one, 
The smaller one is the signal. So what I've done is I've stripped this wire. I'm going to use this as my ground. I'm going to connect that to the middle. I'm going to shred off a little bit of this insulation and connect to the signal wire. So I'll show you in just a second. So as you can see, you can actually clamp it down on the ground wire. And on the inside, you just have to spin the insulated wire, spin the wire itself, and put it through a little hole. Easy soldering job. Take your uh, the insulator on your on your main probe. You don't need to have it in there. Just nice to hold it up. There you go. Now let's do the other step. Wire to the uh, red wire. Solder the outer uh, ground wire to the black wire. Put the main piece of solder or uh, shrink wrap uh, on the two cables at the back right there. Then place the other two pieces of shrink wrap individually over the black and red wire. Then if you don't have a heat gun, you can use a lighter. It's not the greatest way of doing it. It's unprofessional, but it is a way of doing it. So I'm gonna, I'll do it for you, or I'll show you. You don't want to get the flame constantly in one area. You just want to bring it back and forth. You don't want to burn the shrink wrap. If you're young, make sure your parents are in the room to help you with this. So that shrink wrap is done. Now what we want to do is wait for that to cool just for one second. Then bring this shrink wrap, the main shrink wrap, up to about there so you have a bit of, of room for your probes. Then again, use your uh, your flame to bring the shrink wrap down. Now if you want to use different wires for the yellow or the red and black here, you can use longer wires. You can see these wires aren't very long. So you can use different wires if you like. Anyway, so there's your pro there's the uh, the uh, the main connector for your probe. Now all we have to do is solder the red and black wires to the insides of the alligator clips and we're done. So I'll, I'll, I'll open one up and I'll show you how to do it. Before I do the last soldering, if you want to know the best way to get the clip out of the insulation, push down the heads as hard, or the, uh, push down the, uh, the ends as hard as you can. Find something big to grip, grip or the, uh, grip the alligator head around and it'll slip right out. And that's a good way to put it back in too when we're done soldering it. Anyway, uh, what we want to do is, since I've got my black one here, what I've done is I've tinned the end, put it through. You can crimp it down and then solder it, or you don't even have to solder it if you don't want to, but I solder it. So you crimp it down, meaning these two edges right here can be bent down on top of the wire. So what I'll do is I'll crimp it and I'll solder it. And I'll put the I'll put the insulation back on, and then I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so lastly, uh, I've done the soldering and the crimping to the uh, to the uh, alligator clips. And as you can see, what I've done is I've uh, I'm gripping onto something onto in this case a little screwdriver, so I can easily put it back into the insulation. There we go. Insulation's back on. Let's do it to the other one. Uh, after you do your soldering, you might want to wait a minute to do this because the alligator clip itself is very hot. Anyway, and there is your probe, my friends. So how about a demonstration with the little oscilloscope? Again, before I do my demonstration, if you're interested, go to WW for any one of these in either a fully built one uh, or a kit. Go to www.electroniclessons.com or if you want to buy them in bulk and com uh, coming up, uh, go to www.engineeringshock.com. It's our, our new store and we've, we're getting tons of great stuff on it. So uh, if you're looking to buying stuff in bulk for great prices, go to engineeringshock.com. That's www.engineeringshock.com.